Today, we are talking about one of my favorite subjects, and that is side hustles for nurses. I have always, always, always loved me a good side hustle. In a lot of cases, I have known people to actually turn these side hustles that I am going to talk about today into full-time gigs, part-time gigs, seasonal gigs that they always go back to. I have worked many of these positions myself. Now, let me just come right out the bat and tell y'all, I hope the filming and the sun is not being distracting to you all today. The sun is just sunning a certain kind of way. We thank God for the sun. However, a fun fact about me, I have never known how to properly work the blinds, the little string on the blinds. I'm always, every time, going to do it wrong. I'm going to get it stuck and all of that. So we're just going to roll with it. I apologize. And I hope that this is not distracting to you all, but we're going to carry on. Now, I want to talk about a few side hustles. Like I said, some of them I have had the pleasure of working myself. The first thing that I want to talk about is always, always, always consider keeping you a PRN, a per diem, or a part-time nursing position. Sometimes this affords you a break, a change in environment, to work with a different type of nursing, um, you know, the patients and different things like that. Always consider that as a side hustle or a side gig, okay? PRN, per diem, or part-time. And I'm going to talk about a video. I'm going to make create a video just on the benefits of those because some people only work PRN, per diem, or part-time. The next one, I took this course years ago. Shame on me, but this is something that I plan to get back to in the future. Becoming a CNA instructor. As a registered professional nurse, you are able to become a CNA instructor in your state. There's two parts to it. There's the theory part and there's the skill set. Now you have to prepare and take the test to be able, because you can just become a skill set um, uh, evaluator where some people that I know that they just do that part. They don't do the theory the part the, or the clinical part in the classroom. They do the part at the end where they check the students off on the skills, okay? Where they come for the big skills lab and they do in a lot of states, it's 21 skills. In most states, I want to say it's 22 don't quote me, but it's between 21 and 22 clinical skills checklists and competency evaluations that um, nurses that we check them off for. Some people just go and I know people that are on the registry for their state that let that just do recertification processes for people that their certification, their certified nursing assistant. Basic nursing assistant certification has lapsed. In most cases, I want to say if it's 24 months, check with your particular state, 12 or 24 months, somewhere in there, if a certified nursing assistant has not worked, they have to go and be recertified. A part of that recertification is that 21 or 22 skills or how many ever skills. And some people are just on a registry and they have their own fee and people seek them out because they're going to go according to the area that they live in. They'll put in their zip code. They'll get a, a list of instructors that can do the part of that. Nice little side hustle. A lot of people charge 150, 200, 250. It varies. It's your own certification that you're doing and you can charge what you want. Also, as a registered nurse, do not forget that you can become a LPN instructor. You can teach licensed practical nurses or licensed vocational nurses in your state. Now, in a lot of states now, in most states now, you have to have a bachelor's to do theory, but still in a lot of states as a registered professional nurse, 
You can teach in the clinical setting or in a skills lab. So that's something that you may want to look into doing PRN. I used to teach um, clinical theory, um, skills lab. I absolutely love doing all three. I have considered from time to time going back to it. I have not done it thus far, but that is something that you can do as a registered nurse. You can do a part-time, PRN, per diem, different things like that. I used to know when certain nurses were going on vacation, and so I stepped in and did their clinical, uh, their theory, you know, different topics. Nutrition was one of them that I was commonly real uh, known for teaching for this particular school that I worked for. Another one, this is another one that I've done down through the years. And to this day, I haven't done it in so many years. But every year, this town, a town that I used to work in, I used to, during the fall flu season, I used to work as an immunization nurse at their board of health building, their county board of health building there. And I used to go in and administer flu shots. And from time to time to time, I also would go in and administer school immunization shots for people that did not have insurances and different things like that. Uh, I used to administer immunization shots. Right now, there are still places that are looking for nurses to go and do flu shots right now and COVID shots. So look into that, okay? You also can become a CPR or a first aid instructor. This is something that I may be putting on my list of things that I may want to do and acquire in the year of 2024. I'm still dancing around with it, but right now I am on easy breezy. I am not trying to do anything that requires too much of me. And I think something like going into CPR instructor, first aid, you know, something that I may want to do when I want to do it and how I want to do it may be something that I am interested in. The other thing that I want to mention is PRN home health. Home health may not be an option that somebody wants to work full time, but a lot of nurses that work shift work, work in the hospital, work long-term care, uh, remote nursing and different things like that, they find their little space and their little niche in doing home health, especially with starter cares, especially with picking up um, weekend shifts to go out and especially do visits or different things like that. So that may be something that you're interested in and you've never considered doing it part-time or PRN. And a lot of times I also know people that started doing it part-time or PRN and decided to um, go, go, go from part go from PRN to part-time or part-time for full-time and different things like that. Now, this is the year of 2023, hunting. The aesthetics is not going anywhere. Becoming an aesthetic or cosmetic nurse. You may not want to do it full time, but those nurses bring in a lot of money. They open up their own cosmetic um, shops and different things like that. Their own cosmetic suites. They go in and fill voids and it is, it is very workable. I see people that don't even have their own suites now and they go in and they, I don't know exactly how to, how they do it because this is not something that I've ever done, but they use the space. So I'm guessing they're renting out space in some kind of way, but that may be one, a skill because cosmetics, honey, and aesthetics, it's not going anywhere. So that may be something that you want to look into. Um, IV, um, doing IV hydrations and different things like that. Nurses are doing different things like that. A school nurse. I get approached all of the time. Many people know that I am a nurse going in and out of my daughter's school system. Down throughout the years, I am constantly approached about being a school nurse. I have a nurse that I work that I went to school with, and she's always calling me like, T, just sign up and do a PRN or part-time or just fill in or different things like that. I have considered that in the past. It is not off the table. 
Not sure if it's something that I would want to do full time. Right now, I don't want to be really tied or bound to a building um, on a like a committed thing. But I would be interested in like maybe training and filling in part time or PRN, something like that. The next one is a dispensary nurse. Let me explain something to y'all. I use, I have done it all. I have thoroughly enjoyed my nursing career. I was a dispensary nurse. I dispensed methadone. One of the best jobs I have ever had in my life. I had a hilarious time. It was a really good job. The shifts can be very early in the morning to like midday. It, it varies according to the dispensary that you work for. The only thing that I will say that I found like the very early, very early in the morning, it can be very rush, rush, rush. And you have to be accurate, honey, because you have to report off and sign off at the end of that shift to the DEA, baby. They can come and look at them books. You do not want that method on missing. I'm telling you right now. But it was a really laid back job. You'll find in the daytime, people are coming really early because a lot of people are working. They're in school and different things like that. So they come and get their um, methadone very early in the morning, kind of mid lunchtime. People will come on their lunchtime and then the end of the day. The rest of the time, people are just sailing in and out of there. It is a very lax, chill, okay? chill job. I will add that the hours can start early in the morning, 4.45, 5.45, different things like that, but they do have multiple shift options and most of them are open, I want to say six days a week, six days a week. The next thing is become a tutor, a nursing tutor, a NCLEX prep course tutor, different things like that. That is something that you can do right in your own home. You can actually go to schools and like present yourself to instructors, especially if you are a really good student and they know that you, you know, have a great understanding. That is something that they may even, you know, throw you out there for. The next thing I will say is consider... Just consider everybody's not a content creator, but do not put it off the table. A lot of people share a lot of parts of your life on social media, on TikTok, on Instagram, on all of these different platforms, and you are doing it for free, for the free 99, honey. You may as well get paid. Share your journey, share your little niche, your little part of the world that, you know, that people can relate to you. And you can build a community with people in the nursing community. The other thing, people don't like to hear this, okay? I, me, myself, I am a geriatric nurse at heart. I love geriatric patients. Consider long-term care, working evenings, nights, weekends, different things like that. I know the patient population and census is changing and you can, you're not going to get that five, six patients that you're used to somewhere else or eight patients. Those jobs, especially evenings and nights and weekends can be very doable. Now, I don't know if I'll be telling y'all to run out and be a seven to three or seven, a seven P nurse, but I know a lot of people that have been able to go back to school they have been able to take prerequisites or just raise their families working night shifts and weekend shifts. A lot of times they offer a lot of incentives for certain shifts that are challenging. If you are flexible and you are available on shifts, I'm telling you, shifts that they really need help on. Nights and weekends are really one of them. Years ago, I used to only work weekends. I did doubles on the weekends. I worked every weekend, okay? And we got a $500 bonus every shift. That's 16 hours. So that was $1,000 that I made per weekend. Plus, we got time and a half. So I did full-time, 
time and a half on those, just those two 16 hour shifts, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, and we got the bonus as well. So those are some few things that I kind of wanted to throw out there. I'm going to be sharing more things like this on the channel. We want to, you know, share positive things, positive positions. We're coming into the fall. We're trying to get our things for kids and schools and uh, coats and boots. I live in the Midwest, honey, and the winter is the season that keeps on giving. We're uh, getting ready for the holidays. So consider one of these side hustles. Even if you're considering if you're trying to pay off a debt, if you are trying to maybe build an emergency fund, I'm really going to be talking about building a proper emergency fund. So that's, this is some of the ways that you can do that. Until next time, y'all. Bye.